Sound is important in, in films because it delivers the intent, the emotion of the filmmaker. Uh, even before there was sound in picture, we had a piano player off to the side that would tell you the emotion of the film. In a movie, you could take the picture away and you're left with sound, and that sound could still deliver the story. Uh, you would be able to judge the emotion just from the music or the sounds that you're hearing. Radio dramas did it all the time. But if you take sound out of the picture, a picture can tell a thousand words, but we don't know the intent of the emotion of the filmmaker. Emotionally, you need to articulate different things as a filmmaker, and you want a sound system that is able to deliver the softest sound with precision and the loudest sound with visceral force. Well, dynamic range is the level of which we're able to, the, the difference, I guess, between the loudest sound and the quietest sound that can be delivered. At IMAX, we try to deliver the widest dynamic range possible. For the quietest levels to work in a film, the room itself has to be quiet. Because if, if um, a filmmaker is trying to get the, you know, an insect to walk across a dry leaf, if the room noise is louder than that dry leaf, you won't even hear it. Um, so we get our theaters quiet by controlling the air conditioning sound, the HVAC system. And we have the acoustic treatment in the room um, so that um, sounds are absorbed and, and the room itself is quiet. Maximizing dynamic range and getting to the top end is all about headroom. It's having more power than you need. So we have amplifiers that are thousands and thousands of watts, not because we're delivering thousands and thousands of watts in the room, but we need that headroom in order to deliver clean power to the speakers. To give you a car analogy, um, if you wanted a car to drive 60 miles an hour, you wouldn't build an engine that could only go 60 miles an hour because then you'd be flooring it the whole time. You have an engine that goes 120 or 240 or whatever it is so that you have that extra headroom. And that's sort of the same way an IMAX amp works. We have an amp far more powerful than we need so that it can deliver the sound without distortion. The IMAX loudspeakers are designed ground up completely different than any other loudspeaker in the world. They're based off what we call PPS, Proportional Point Source Technology. The Proportional Point Source Technology allows us to deliver sound to people who are sitting close to the loudspeakers at the same level as those who are sitting further away. They give us a better distribution of sound in the theatre, so you don't have to sit in that front centre seat. You can sit in a much broader area and hear the sound the way it was intended. The particular physical characteristic that allows us to do that is the design of the horns. On the lower portion of the horn, the flare rate is faster than it is on the upper portion, so that it actually bends the energy distributed on the seats down, covering the seats nearer the loudspeaker more effectively. And then the expansion of the wavefront as it goes into the room covers the rear seats. A full range speaker, like the ones that are used in IMAX theaters, uh, deliver a broader spectrum of sound. We get lower lows and higher highs. Even something as simple as the type of wood is examined. They're built by hand. They're braced internally to control resonances and to ensure the stiffness of, of the enclosure. It's a very careful and detailed approach to designing these boxes. We also, in, in addition to those full range speakers, we have subwoofers in our theaters that handle all the really, really low stuff. So the rumble in your chair when the, when the rocket's being launched, that's the work of the subwoofer. And we go down to about 23 hertz quite comfortably, uh, while a THX system would stop at 40. That full octave is what makes it real. In IMAX, there's a lot of emphasis on the surround channels. We try to immerse the audience in ways that other formats don't. IMAX is all about having a great sound image, so you're in a bubble of sound. We capitalize off this phantom imaging, and that phantom image is being able to place sounds anywhere between speakers, and that allows us to localize things, and that sort of takes advantage of, of the way, as humans, we hear. If I snap my fingers, I can tell that the sound is coming from here, because it hits this ear at one speed, and then it has to travel around my head and get to the other ear. And my brain calculates and is able to say, well, there's this time difference between this ear and that ear. The sound must be there. And when we're able to do that in a theater, now all of a sudden those sounds are real. One of the main goals of IMAX is to deliver a consistent experience in every theater. And from an audio front, the way we do that is with an auto calibration system that has microphones in the theater that actually measures every single speaker in that theater every single day. And if there's an anomaly that has shown up today that wasn't there yesterday, that can get adjusted 
and it gets reported back to the network operations center, where they're able to monitor all of the changes and variables in that theater. And then it can be adjusted so that the theater is back up to spec. And all of this happens without the projectionist or theater management even knowing. It's something that IMAX does to make sure that the quality of the film and the sound remains consistent day after day. When Hollywood content is remastered for IMAX, we deploy the DMR tools, which is about converting both picture and sound for display in IMAX theaters. Optimizing audio for IMAX playback isn't remixing. We reformat it. It just allows us to create a really amazing differentiated experience. Well, you could have an alien that's a, behind you in the 7-1, and you feel it. You feel that alien doing something behind you. But in the IMAX room, it's like he's really on top of you because there is, he's a little brighter and rounder. And it's not like we want to remix the film for an IMAX room. What we have to do for IMAX is base management. You can't just send it to a transfer house and roll out the EQs that dump into the sub. You have to actually physically work those low frequencies to keep the integrity of your mix and to let it live. And it's cool because you can open it up a little bit and get that midnight screening, IMAX theater 3D for guys that are like fans that are waiting and they're there, I'm gonna see it in IMAX and you wanna give them that extra juice. You want that extra beef down low. If you can get a little more, we err on the side of just a little bit more. I love cinema, I love IMAX. I love that I get to work and make a big noise. So, you know, I want that bottom end. I want, uh, you know, I, I want the clarity of that.